Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Habilament. Characteristic apparatus, trappings, the dress characteristic of an occupation or occasion, usually used in plural, clothes... Usually used in plural. Is there okay. a, is there a singular uh, clothes? Uh, yeah, that <laughs> I guess not uh, because cloth isn't it. Yeah, clothe is a verb. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. All right, but I mean, it's just really just saying this is a fancy word for clothes. Clothes. Yeah, but I guess in one of the meanings it kind of meant like a little bit like a uniform. I guess. Yep, I I took that as well. Nice. Did you run with uniform at all? So I'll tell you exactly what I ran with. And all right. I just explained this to Rob that my notes were mysteriously deleted on my computer 10 mm-hmm. seconds before we recorded. So I'm winging this off of what I remember from my notes. So the idea was, and I had a really good first sentence too, uh, that your clothes define you or that the, the, your uniform defines you. And usually that's in, in some sort of line of work. And what I thought was, and this is exactly one of those themes that I think is too much of a stretch to make any sense ever, but it's that you don't have a job, you're trying to work, and you also don't have many clothes. And that's where the theme falls apart for me is because it's like, I understand you don't have a job, but you also don't have many clothes. I guess that works. Sometimes people don't have a lot of good clothes. But what you're doing is you're going... And it's deck building. You're going to, let's say, like a thrift store or whatever and buying whatever's there, whatever's available. There's not Mm -hmm. a lot available. And you're getting all these different outfits. And then you're getting getting them into your deck and dealing your uh, your five cards for the day. And that's the war. It's essentially a wardrobe builder. This is what you have for the day is these five cards. They're the clean ones. You have to go out on these interviews and try to get some jobs with what you what you drew. So you're going to put together some sort of outfit, uh, and you know if you're going to go work construction in a suit because that just happens to be what you put together, uh, you might be able to do it. But there are <laughs> some downsides to it. You might not be hired the next day. Um, and then the opposite, if you're going to you know wear construction clothes to a law office or something. Mm-hmm. You'll only last so long. So then mm-hmm. I thought, uh, and it would ha- it would be some sort of like almost like one of those like avatar builder games where you have like a top and a bottom. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you might have like half of what you need, and it's going to get you through the day. Right. Um, but I thought there Stay should behind be- your desk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you can lay low in this outfit, you'll be good. But I thought <laughs> what would be interesting was like <laughs> another one of those scenarios that's very unlikely to happen, but you know, is the only way to set something up like this is that you go and do your laundry and get some things mixed up from time to time. So, you Mm. know, you have the clothes that you thought you were doing all right. And then you get somebody else's like swimsuit or something, (laughs) but I don't know. It's just trying to work it into where really the only thing that matters is not your work performance in any way. It's how you look and how, how people perceive you. There you go. Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Exactly. That makes sense. Well, I think I might have mentioned my Taylor game beforehand, but um, I was specifically thinking about the action of sewing clothing. Okay. And so uh, specifically each person gets like a giant pegboard, an empty pegboard and a certain number of pegs. And uh, did you ever do string art? in elementary school where you have like kind of a bat a pattern on the back of a kind of like a cardboard thing. And you basically just put string in one hole, loop it and put it out the other one. So and if, I've... if you follow those patterns, you get like either a heart or a snowflake or that kind of stuff. I've done that, but to go one degree further, I've bought a bunch of nail art. Have you seen nail art? I mean, just like, for your nails? No, like they hammer nails into a piece of wood and then run, oh. run the string between them to make like an owl or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I actually did that for uh, my wedding. Oh, we nice. had a we had a little heart and uh, people could write messages and then they stick them in between the strings of the heart. 
And so I was imagining a much smaller scale where each person gets this giant pegboard. And I hate the term recipe game, but almost just because it, it represents... Um, a lot of games that I see is where you have something that has requirements. First person to get those requirements gets a number of points. And yeah. it's not as exciting as I would want it to be, but just in this iteration to at least get me going, um, is that these recipes actually have shapes. So you have the shape of a suit coat or you have shape of a pants. And this is your workspace. And so you're trying to fit as many recipes into your workspace as possible. And you outline those recipes in. And so each recipe comes with a number of pegs that are assigned to it. And these pegs have actions coded to them. So if you have orange pegs, they do a thing. If they do blue pegs, they let you string uh, strings between two pegs or that kind of stuff. And so you have a certain number of strings that you can kind of line between these pegs. And a recipe is done when you've connected all of the pegs together across this recipe. And so you need to know how much string you need for a job because you don't want to overdo it, but you also don't want to run short. Um, you need to pick the right jobs so they fit well on your board. And... That's about it I had, but I mean, it would look cool, and the action is cool of stringing stuff between rather than trying to, like, be extreme. Like, the pegs help you in a real space game to be more precise. Yes. Exactly. And that's a, and that's a, that's always a problem with, like, string railways or turbo drift. Just, like, a single bump could throw things out of whack, but this kind of dials it in a little bit to be like, okay, this peg can be either here or here, your length of string either reaches or it doesn't. And so removing that kind of finite nature from from the game would help with at least those edge cases. That is but, one of those things I used to get really stressed out about was the edge cases. And then I realized mm -hmm. I, I in in most games it doesn't matter, right? Like yeah. it's in most games that are of that weight. Like in string railways, if you're gonna get really bent about it, then you should probably be playing something else. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and, but that's good to have an and, answer uh, to it either way because it still is a pro. <laughs> it still is a problem. It's, yes, it's just uh, it some, will sometime, come up. Sometimes it's a player problem. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you have to kind of manage expectations about what kind of game it is. Is it something that you should want to feel like you can argue about it, or if it's just like, nah, man, just do what you think is right. Yeah, we played. So uh, that's... Uh, I was playing Turbo Drift over the weekend. And, oh, nice. Uh, and, like, I'd see some things and, like, shift it just a hair. And, like, I, re <laughs> I realized that nobody would have... It wouldn't have made a difference. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's what I had. That's cool. Yeah, I um, I don't have any other notes on it. I just... I I picture a closet. That was my... You know, I thought a suitcase. I thought a closet. I, was, I didn't... You know, I was just thinking of how clothes are handled. You got a suit, you got a construction vest, and then a Batman <laughs> outfit. And you have to figure out which job interview you're going to go to. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. I would play it. Nice. <laughs> Me too. All right, cool. Next time. All right, talk to you later. See ya.